This video is brought to you by Raycon. I am an avid lover of music, video games, soundtracks, classic albums, as long as it sounds good, that's all I really care about. And one of the most important things for me is sound quality and ease of access. And you might be surprised to hear this, but I've only recently got into the whole wireless headphone market. Luckily, Raycon was fortunate enough to show me the goods. Co-founded by Ray J and love to hell and back by well-renowned musicians like Snoop Dogg, who might know a thing or two about sound quality, and you got a lot going on here. Raycon, such as their latest E25 model, sound just as good as leading audio devices and are generally about half the price of what you would normally pay for these kind of products. And good god, that can be a lot sometimes. Raycons also come in a variety of colors to fit your personal preferences, and their seamless Bluetooth connectivity ensures that you won't have any intrusive stubs or wires getting in the way of your music listening. Setting them up is super easy too, you just hold the button on the side and your listening device will immediately pick them up. The compact design really drives with me, you barely notice these things and I think that's cool in a futuristic sense. The noise isolation is outstanding. You won't be picking up much sound from outside at all while using these, so if you're the type that likes sleeping the music, then um, you should probably sit with one eye open just to be safe. You can save 15% off your order by clicking the link in the description below. Use them while you're doing house chores, going for a walk, or whatever it is you do in the house when no one is around. All right, so I'm, I'm a little overdue with these next couple of videos, but I've been meaning to give them a look before the end of the year anyway, so before I begin the next marathon, I might as well tackle them now. First up is Team Sonic Racing. Sumo Digital's latest racing endeavor involving everyone's favorite blue punching bag, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I quite enjoyed their last project, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform. I spent some time talking about the game at the end of my Sonic Racing Games video I did a while back, though you probably only remember my Sonic Freeriders experience. Can't blame me if that's the case. <laughs> But I wasn't terribly excited at the announcement of Team Sonic Racing. And throughout the months leading to its release, I kept thinking, man, Team Sonic Racing is going to be a great soundtrack. Because for a while, that's all Sega did to promote the game, just show off some music. Great music, to be fair, Team Sonic Racing brings in a lot of classics from Sonic's library of tunes from both 2D and 3D adventures. The new life given with these energetic remixes makes them top quality, and I do recommend them. And I guess fixating on the music for so long was one way of doing things, but you know, were they going to let us see the actual game beyond the CGI intro? Is it really just Sonic characters? Can the vehicles transform? Will the courses change throughout each lap? It felt there wasn't much going on in that marketing department. Although, the best thing to come from this was the Team Sonic Racing Overdrive shorts. I know I didn't really discuss Sonic Mania Adventures when I was talking about Sonic Mania Plus back in the round 2 video, but those along with these cartoons are A+. I know it'd be too much to ask for, but every major Sonic release needs to have something like these. I would love a whole series like this if I'm being honest. They nail the sort of colorful whimsy I personally expect from this franchise, while celebrating everything we love about Sonic and the large cast of characters, with no dialogue Whatsoever. I know there's been this building animosity towards the lighthearted nature Sonic has heavily leaned on since uh, Sonic Colors, I want to say, but I think that's where Sonic works best. The writing can suck, and it has for the better part of the decade, don't get me wrong on that one. But if you're going to sell this series, it's not by having Sonic Mark as a global terrorist or by killing the fucker. It's by seeing Shadow be a dick to baby Chow or watching Eggman do this silly ass dance after taking Tails' trophy. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but this is a direction I would love Sonic to stick with. Anyway, to uh, see Sumo Digital behind the wheel again left me thinking, well, if anything, at least the game is in good hands. But when the game was first being teased, I thought, if just for a moment, that this was going to be the long-awaited sequel to Sonic R we've uh, kind of wanted for years now. Come on, the design of that R is such a clear-cut reference to it. And Sonic R is one of those games you know had amazing potential if it was done just right. But if they're going go-karts again, I mean, whatever. It worked before, it'll work again, and uh, Team Sonic Racing really feels the need to just cruise by with the lowest amount of effort possible. 
To get this out of the way now, Sonic and All-Stars Race and Transform is the better game. And I would recommend you play that over this. It's cheaper for one thing. Team Sonic Racing is currently going for 40 bucks, which is not full price, sure, but considering the steps back it takes when comparing it to Transform, it is a factor to consider. You can get Transform along with its DLC for 20 bucks, and overall, I think it's just more fulfilling. The larger variety in characters available makes it better to start. I know we all poked fun at Danica Patrick when the game was relevant, but if you were a Sega enthusiast, it was great to see representation from Super Monkey Ball, Nights into Dream, Skies of Arcadia, Jet Set Radio, among other other franchises included. Yeah, Sonic is and will probably forever be Sega's main moneymaker until about 10 years from now when the Yakuza series claims the throne. <laughs> But it was good to see Sega acknowledge its other intellectual properties. Even if releasing a racing game with nothing but Sonic characters made sense from a financial and marketing standpoint. But when it comes to the core gameplay, Transform also takes that mantle. The transforming vehicles put a great spin on the standard kart racer. To have your car suddenly transform into a boat or airplane and have course design reflect those changes made for a tremendously fun and chaotic experience. Now, does it stand a chance against Mario Kart? Not really, no, but at least with Transform, it was trying to be its own thing while still remaining a solid kart racer. Team Sonic Racing does away with the other Sega characters and the transforming vehicles. It's strictly Sonic characters and one standard kart. It's not Team Sonic Racing, it's Team Standard Racing. Now keeping it Sonic characters exclusively is not the end of the world, but I am a little confused on who they decided to include. And for the record, I'm not one to think that ugh, so and so is such a waste of a slot. I'm not that much of an elitist prick. If you like this character's inclusion, good on you. But one thing they really emphasize in this game is teamwork. You're not just racing by yourself, but as a group of three. Almost like Sonic Heroes with none of the bloat. And if that's the case, I would think they will put a little more thought into these teams. Now with Team Sonic, it's Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and with Team Dark, it's Shadow, Rouge, and Omega, as you'd expect. But then there's cases like Amy, who gets Big the Cat, so okay, like it's Sonic Heroes, but then she also gets Chow. You know who else had Chow? Cream the Rabbit. But she's nowhere to be seen here. She isn't even acknowledged in any form or fashion. What's that about? Of course, I love seeing Blaze included and having Silver part of the team make sense, from a meta standpoint anyway, but why are they paired with Vector? He's Team Chaotix, but SBO and Charmy are not in this game either, so Vector needed some place to go, and you will never convince me that Zavok joined Dr. Eggman's team willingly. He hated Eggman in Sonic Lost World, and they could have wrote around this by saying Eggman found another magic con shell to control Zavok, but they don't even bother explaining it, and Zavok just ends up looking like an Eggman flunky, which he is clearly not. Again, not against the characters being there, I'm just more confused on the pairings. But yeah, that's the main thing with Team Sonic Racing. It's not just you, it's you and your team. But this doesn't have that much of an impact on the standard formula. At the end of the day, it's still a combination of item usage, skillful driving, and let's face it, luck that will ultimately decide who comes out on top. But good teamwork can also turn the tide if you practice it enough. Teammates can leave a trail behind their vehicles, and if you stick inside it for a bit, you can perform a slingshot, giving you a burst of speed that can keep you in good position, or get you back up to speed if you smacked against the wall or got hit by an item. And I love this, I like to look at it as the turbulence mechanic from Sonic Riders done right. It's much easier to get a handle on, and the results are clear cut. I managed to recover from bad positions several times by utilizing slingshots at the right moment, and it felt good executing them. If you grab an item you don't need, whether it's because of preference or your current position can't take advantage of it, you can offer the item to a teammate that can probably make better use of it at the time. You're doing all these team actions because this is how you build up your ultimate meter, something that when completely full lets you temporarily blaze through the competition in a glorious streak of light, ignoring terrain, achieving high speed, and it makes you impervious to everything but pitfalls. And you don't even have to activate the ultimate either when you fill it up. Sometimes the winning factor is all about knowing the best time to use your ultimate, although keep in mind your opponent can also do this too, and I lost a few races because my competition activated their ultimate at the tail end of the final lap. The team mechanic is a fun inclusion, and one I think, especially in a multiplayer session, can be rewarding when done correctly. By yourself, it's not as significant, and if you really don't enjoy it at all, the game even allows you to race in solo competitions in exhibition mode, where it's more along the lines of the first two All-Star games. Otherwise, it's you and your buddies going for the gold together, and in the case of Grand Prix, that could be a little frustrating. You know how these work, you're racing a number of tracks in a row, and the one with the highest score is the winner at the end. But in this game, Grand Prix accumulate points from all three members of the team, and you can perform as near perfect as you you can scoring first in every race, but if your teammates consistently place in 6th or 11th and your rival teams average higher positions altogether, they can end up taking it all by the end and there's nothing you can really do about that when you have computer allies. And all these games have a degree of luck, yeah, but that leaves you feeling a special kind of miffed. And you might be dealing with that kind of scenario a couple of times in this game's story mode, although story is really pushing it. The presentation reminds me a lot of Sonic Rivals 2. All the dialogue is fully voiced, but it's just character portraits switching back and forth as they exchange friendly banter, demonstrate extremely short attention spans, and deliver corny-ass jokes that make a child cringe. 
this mysterious tanuki named Dodonpa has invited Sonic and friends to participate in his racing competition. Though he is vague as shit on his reasoning, Sonic and company go along with it because what the hell they're in between games anyway. Tails and some others are highly suspicious of Dodonpa's motives and think he might be working with Dr. Eggman, but then Dr. Eggman appears and wants to make things miserable for everyone, and the story kinda goes nowhere afterwards. The Dodonpa just ends up being this dude who wants to make an engine that runs more efficiently and needed Sonic and company's help to test it out, making me wonder why he just didn't tell them that from the start they raced for less before. Dr. Eggman wants the engine for himself and tries to do his usual Eggman thing, but he's quickly dealt with and that's the end of this very nothing story. Characters show up, you do some racing challenges, earn medals to unlock other challenges, and then you stop Dr. Eggman. Simple but insignificant, and some of these challenges are awful. But a good chunk of them are optional to be fair. If you do well enough in the mandatory missions, you'll earn enough stars to unlock the next story mission easily, but if that's not the case, you might have to do some of these and ugh. The daredevil challenges requires that you drive through these goalposts for score multipliers, but to get a score worth a damn, you need to also drift through these tight ass rings and that level of constant precision with a go-kart is just a fucking nightmare. The ring challenges are not as bad but not much better as you need to drift through lines of rings to keep the timer going. It's all just awkward, drifting isn't the problem, it's when it's required and it doesn't feel good to do so. Uh, the traffic challenges aren't much fun because you have to practice safe driving in a kart game, what kind of shit is that? Uh, the target game wasn't that bad though, you know anything involving destruction was actually okay. Like those assault challenges where you have to destroy as many egg ponds as quickly as you can with missiles and fender benders, that was fine, everything else I could have done without. For what it's worth to go back to the story for a second, I do love how much of a lovable dork Silver is now. He's always had shades of this in earlier games, but you take this kid out of the apocalyptic setting and what you got is a good natured dude that's just happy to be there. And I love how Sonic tries to playfully trash talk him, but Silver just isn't getting with the program. I'm so gonna own you, Silver. Okay. No, you're supposed to say, in your dreams, Sonic. In your dreams, Sonic. Too late, the moment's passed. Other than that, everything else in the game is what you'd expect. You can race with friends, both online and locally. There's time trials, single exhibition races, all the things that check the list in a racing game. You got your Sonic characters on their specific classes, speed characters that bring the mileage, technical races that have better handling, and power characters that aren't affected by certain obstacles on the road. I'd say they're not as extreme as the type advantages like in Sonic Riders, but these quirks can affect how you approach a course with a specific build. But if you're looking for something a little more to your taste, you can earn these credits by winning races and use them in this gumball machine to unlock an utter ass load of customization parts for your cars. Something to increase top speed, boosting abilities, defense, handling, the whole shebang. And it doesn't stop there, the game also lets you customize the color of your vehicle, what kind of texture you like, the type of horn your car has. It's all cosmetic, but the level of customization given to you is commendable. Unfortunately, you you can't buy specific parts for specific characters at your leisure, everything is given to you randomly when using the gumball machine, and though you can rake in the credits very easily in this game, story mode alone is a testament to that. This is something I wish we had more control over. I'm not going to be using all these characters, them's just the facts. Once I unlocked Blaze in story mode, she's all I ever used, so I'd rather just have the option to buy custom parts for her whenever I want it so that I can drive in my extremely gaudy gold-plated vehicle as soon as possible. There's a decent selection of tracks given all representing themes Sonic has relished in throughout his adventures. Beaches, casinos, arctic regions, deserts, military bases, everything you would expect to see, but unlike Transform, the courses don't really change throughout the race, which is good if you appreciate more consistency but it's not as dynamic and therefore not as memorable. It's a more Mario Kart approach, but I gotta say, besides the obvious change in aesthetic, a lot of these courses sort of blended in for me. I didn't think anything here was terrible, just to be clear, but a lot of it was by the numbers it felt. Yeah, the music's great at least, as are the graphics. I'm playing the PS4 version for this video, I should have mentioned that earlier. I hear the Switch version isn't as smooth in terms of frame rate and looks, which I think will go without saying when it comes to multi-platform games for this generation, so if you're gonna buy this, get it on PS4 or PC, after a price drop, I feel like I've been saying that a lot lately. Even at a discounted 40 bucks, I don't think this is worth even that, especially since it's a step back from Transform in just about every sense. It is a perfectly fine game, you know, I had a good time. It's good that I can pick Blaze in this, and there was nothing I found broken about the game, but I find no reason to play this over Transformed. It doesn't offer as much in content, I find, and the level of customization for your vehicle is admirable, but that isn't enough to push this game into must-buy territory. At this point, I'm just waiting for the next major Sonic release, and I wouldn't consider Team Sonic Racing to be a good holdover. Well, let's see if the next game could do any better. It is a remake of one of my favorite kart races of all time, so I'll see you guys next time with Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on the PlayStation 4. Thank you all for watching, have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.